that has been extended to us, O oh God. Day by day, morning by morning, new mercies we see. And for that, we thank you, Lord. We are grateful. We will never take, O oh God, your grace for granted, your mercies towards us for granted. So today, O oh God, we lift up your name. We magnify your name, Lord. We give you all the glory, praise, all the honor, O oh God, that's due unto your name. Because you are great. You are our great, big, awesome, wonderful God. So I bless your name today, Lord. I give you thanks because you are worthy. Thank you, Lord. today another time oh God just lifting you up just to say thank you Lord thank you for another day thank you Lord for waking us up and causing us oh God to be in our right minds Lord speak to our hearts today teach us Holy Spirit cause us to Learn today, O oh God. Speak, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for being here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your presence, Lord. Thank you for your presence, Lord. Truly, you are here with us even now. So I thank you, Lord. Thank you for being in our midst right now to teach us. Lord, I decrease right now so that you can increase, so that your people, oh God, will hear your voice. I pray, oh God, that you would bless their lives today. Bless your word, oh God, unto their hearts so that they would become transformed O oh God by the power of your word there is no power O oh God in my words but there is power and anointing in those words O oh God which you would fill my mouth with even now Lord take charge of the airwaves and cause your word to go forth even now with anointing with power and with clarity, O oh God, we rebuke every single plan of the enemy to disrupt this broadcast today. We pull down his plans and we render them null and void in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I cover myself under your blood. I cover your people who will listen, who will participate today, mighty God. Hide us under your wings. Cover us, God. Cover us. Hide us in the cleft of your rock where the devil cannot find us. Lord, erase every trace of us. Let him not be able to even pick up our scent this morning. Lord, we commit ourselves to you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Good morning. Good morning, friends. Good morning. This is Diane, and I'm coming to you today with another word of encouragement. I am coming to you today with another word from the Word of God. And it is truly my hope that by the time we get to today's devotion, by the time we get to the end, you will be blessed, you will be encouraged, your heart will be uplifted. Those things that you are experiencing, those things that you are going through, you will understand that God is there with you. And there are no powers in hell that can overtake your life. When God is with you, he never fails, friends. He never fails. Be not dismayed. Do not be fearful. The Lord is with you because that's what he has promised and he cannot lie. He cannot lie. You know, I'm just going to jump right in today because we only have a few minutes and I will be dealing with this matter of witchcraft in the church 
for the rest of this week, for the rest of our devotion. So please remain prayerful because I, I, I've seen this before where when, you know, enlightenment is coming to the body of Christ or when we are being enlightened by the word of God, the devil doesn't like that. So we cancel with even the words of our mouth, with the declaration from our lips, all of his evil plans and he will not prevail this week. He will not prevail. You know, friends, there are so many things that happen in the body of Christ and most of them, some of them tend to be very taboo. We don't want to talk about it. We don't want to deal with it. We leave that for, you know, it to get solved by itself. We don't want to address them. Because for some people, when you do certain things, you are just, uh, as they say, opening up a can of worms. Well, we're going there with God this week. We're going there with the Holy Spirit as led by him. As I mentioned yesterday, last week, my husband and I, we were away at this conference. It was actually one of uh, Prophetess Martin Nottage's events. Uh, she had it in the Coral Springs area. And, you know, we were there last year and then we went to the Bahamas in October. So we were there in June last year in Florida, went to the Bahamas in October. And then we went back to Florida this year. And I'm telling you, friends, whether we want to believe certain things exist or not, they do. You understand? Not because we are sometimes so naive, not because we are so ignorant of what happens around us. It doesn't mean that because we don't want to deal with something, that means it doesn't exist. And I'm seeing it. It's almost like, you know, that, that, that well, people say they use the word like the ostrich, you know, it. <laughs> It is frightened. It buries its head in the sand. And I guess that ostrich forgets that it's, it's, I mean, maybe one of the biggest birds around. You know, and it cannot hide totally by just putting your head in the sand. And that's what we have been doing over the years. But after attending this event, you know, and being a part of this whole ministry, I've learned so much, friends. And that's why it's so important for us not to just stay cooped up in our little corner. Right? I said it yesterday that when you go out and you travel and you listen to others, you learn so much because there are some things that you experience that you could not really put your finger on it and say, okay, this is what is happening to my life. But as you go out and you hear other people's testimonies and experiences, it just shocks you. But listen now, today I am starting this because it has happened to me all right so i have a personal encounter and personal experience along with this so i'll read the word of god and read to us what god says about this whole matter and then i will share with you a part of my personal experience right it would take me all day but of course i would concise it uh, part of my testimony is already in a separate video on well it's not a video audio on youtube so when you go to my channel diane lewis and you scroll down uh, i did that sometime last year so you'll find it but friends we are living in perilous times and if we are not prepared to deal with some of the things that are happening or that are coming even in the very church then we're gonna be in trouble let me start off by saying we need the holy spirit we need the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth. We need the Holy Spirit. We need the empowerment. We need that fire that comes with having the Holy Spirit indwell our lives. Because I'm telling you, you're going to face some stuff and you will need the discernment from the Lord. Yes, there is a spiritual gift called discernment of spirits, you know, which helps us to detect, you know, real uh, or, or be able to separate real from false, right? Mainly that's what it does. So what you're essentially able to do, it's for example, if somebody comes with false doctrine or false teaching or false operations, you're able to pick up on it, right? It's, it's nothing new, meaning, you know, you, people have had the presence of the Holy Spirit helping their lives for years. And thank God for the Holy Spirit, because if we don't have him, trust me, we're going to be in trouble. All right. First of all, let's 
define let's let's look at some definitions because sometimes people get confused in terms of when we talk about witchcraft and you know what's all this stuff you know y'all always coming up with some kind of thing and you know that's a devil that doesn't want God's people to know of his devices the Bible says we cannot be ignorant of the devil's devices all right he doesn't like us and we should always remember that and anything that he does it it is to fulfill his agenda which is to kill steal and destroy all right so let's look at some definitions and then I'll read a passage for you what is witchcraft what is witchcraft what are we talking about and if you should pick up a dictionary well most dictionaries you know the basic the basic definition you'll find is that it's the practice of magic you know or the use of spells it's sorcery it's occultism wizardry witching right obia necromancy voodoo hoodoo divination it's the use of incantations right it's basically friends interference it's interfering with the lives of others through casting of spells and curses using incantations to call down curses on the lives of others now a lot of times we tend to gloss over that because some people say well if you're any you know child of god at all then these things would not harm you they would not hurt you they would not whatever well listen in my case i can tell you this right now because i heard it as well when i was attacked you know it when i was attacked by witchcraft let's call it what it is you know person said oh you know dan you know perhaps it was a door in your life an opening in your life there was something there that you know brought this attack onto you but let me tell you something friends when you see that devil gets latched on to you to your life and he decides he's going to destroy you especially especially when you have the calling of god on your life do not take anything for granted friends do not take anything for granted even just to come on this morning to do this live you know normally i charge up my phone and for some reason i am charging my phone last night my phone charges quickly i mean quickly and for some reason phone is charged well well plugged in being charged got up the phone hardly charged i said devil you're a liar this devotion is going out this morning so witchcraft is that practice of magic and the use of spells and all of that now this is what the lord says let's look at deuteronomy 18 and i'm reading verses 9 to 14. let's look at deuteronomy 18 and i'm reading verses 9 to 14. now i'm reading from the new living translation and i like this right at the top it it says from the new living translation a call to holy living all right a call to holy living so this simply means whatever i'm gonna read now the lord is giving instructions and if for any reason anything that's mentioned here then clearly persons who practice these things are not living a holy life regardless of what they think and that's why it's so surprising and shocking that these things exist in the body of Christ. These things exist in the church, whether we want to believe it or not. Deuteronomy 18, 9 to 14. It says, when you enter the land, the Lord your God is giving you. No, he's speaking to his people. All right. The Lord your God is giving you. Be very careful not to imitate the detestable customs of the nations living there for example never sacrifice your son or daughter as a burnt offering and do not let your people practice fortune telling or use sorcery or interpret omens or engage in witchcraft or cast spells or function as mediums or psychics or call forth the spirits of the dead Anyone who does these things is detestable to
to the Lord. It is because the other nations have done these detestable things that the Lord your God will drive them out ahead of you. But you must be blameless before the Lord your God. The nations you're about to displace consult sorcerers and fortune tellers. But the Lord your God forbids you to do such things. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That's his word. Friends, the Lord hates sorcery. He hates witchcraft. He hates all of these things that we just read there. And it is sad, but it is happening in the body of Christ. How do you know, Sister Diane? What proof do you have? What's all this I hear y'all talking about? All this witchcraft and witch and wizard and warlock and all of that. What's all of that? Well, as the week pro progresses, we will get into some of that. But listen here. Let me tell you a little bit about what happened to me. Now, some of you would have heard this already. But for the benefit of those who haven't, I'll try to be as concise as possible. In 1996, right? Yes, yeah, several years ago. I had what I would call a, a very unusual experience. Suddenly, when I say suddenly, because I went to my bed feeling fine, you know, and that's the thing about witchcraft. It, it just comes upon you. It's almost like it blindsides you. Now, because I know the Holy Spirit was living in me, there was a little hint before, you know, it's like the Lord revealed to me that, you know, an attack is coming. Just prepare yourself. But I did not understand the magnitude of that, to be honest. To be honest, you know, I was 21 years old. And basically, you know, you're going about your Christian walk. You know, you try to live in peace and harmony with everybody. You try to live well. Like as the Bible says, as much as it relies on you, be at peace with all men. That's pretty much my life at 21. And suddenly... In the middle of the night, I got up to use the bathroom and I fell. I fell to the ground in the middle of the night. I fell. Why did I fall? I could not, I could not stand up. I could not walk. I realized that I was numb. I was numb from my waist down. So literally, I got off the bed thinking I could walk. I couldn't. I fell. You know, thank God my mother was there and I pretty much had to cry out. And she came and like, what is this? Both of us were surprised because I tried to stand up and I just could not stand up. She had to help me up, right? Help me up, help me to the bathroom. And we're there thinking, what is going on? Okay, long story short, as the day progresses, I realized that this was not a dream. It was actually happening. I was numb, paralyzed from my waist down, suddenly could not walk. All right. Over the space of time, I knew that, well, something is wrong. So when you are sick, put that in quotations, what do you do? You run to the doctor. And that's what I did. I ran to every clinic, the hospital. It was right here in the BVI where I'm living now. This happened in the British Virgin Islands, right? So for, for people who believe that, you know, some of these things are only restricted to certain countries, uh, that no, that's, that's ignorance, all right? Witchcraft is everywhere. Let me let me say that loud and clear. Witchcraft is everywhere. It's all over the Caribbean. People say, oh, well, it came down in the culture from Africa. Listen, friends, if we want to stay ignorant about these things, that's on us. But the Lord requires us to understand what is happening in this day. All right. No, I sought the attention of doctors. Because when you're sick, you seek doctors. None of them could tell me what was wrong with me. And that's part of it. You can hardly get a diagnosis when you are being attacked. All right? None of them could tell me. They tested me for everything. Everything. All sorts of diseases. Everything that could possibly affect my nerves like that. All right? A doctor, one of my main physicians here in BVI... He said, you know what, we, we are beyond, you know, this, we, we cannot help you. So you would need to go home, which is to Jamaica, to seek further uh, attention. And I'm just cutting through some stuff here because I have to come back and tell you all, you know, what really happened, how I knew it was witchcraft after a while. 
went to Jamaica, ended up doing this very expensive, you know, procedure test called a nerve conduction studies. All right. Because they knew that my nerves were damaged. The nerves in my legs, they were damaged. So it's like, okay, whatever we can find out, whatever we can detect, then we will tell you long and short that machine that they hooked me up to spit out, I mean, papers that could fill a book. It, it was very thick. The, the, the report that I was supposed to take back, you know, to the BVI was very thick, but come to find out that report gave no kind of conclusive anything of what was wrong with me. All right. I'm there in Jamaica, you know, I'm, I'm getting prayer, prayer the word. I mean, I, I lived in the word. I remember one day my grandfather, because that's where I went to my grandparents, he said to me, he passed and he said to me, hmm, such reading will make one mad. He was making a joke. You know, that's in the Bible there in the book of Acts. You know, when I was just in the word, just studying because I just wanted to find out, you know, from the Lord, you know, what was really going on because the doctors didn't have the answer. Over time, over time, after much prayer, supplication, you know, I started to, you know, regain a, a strength because a doctor here had told me that you would walk with a limp, you know, if you should come back <laughs> To walking, you will walk with a limp. Well, I, I would like to say right now, praise be to God, I do not walk with a limp. But while I was there, I had an encounter with a taxi man. All right? And a taxi man. Now, listen, the Lord can use whomever he wishes to use to bring information to you. This taxi man, never seen the man before, but he had to take my well my cousin wanted a taxi i called the taxi they sent this scruffy looking man real scruffy looking if i were to judge the man by his appearance i would not have gotten into his car all right but after letting off my cousin we went all the way to ocho rios jamaica to let her off and i'm in kingston on the way back and i give god thanks that my friend was there because she's a witness this man don't doesn't know me from adam as we say and he was playing this reggae music in his car. And I was so kind of, you know, turned off by the music because it was loud and it was just raw. And I said, before I come out of this vehicle, I'm going to tell this man that Jesus loves him. And on the way, he turned down the music. This man that was playing that rough and gruff type of music turned it down. And he started to worship, started to say things like, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. No, I am shocked out of my wits and I'm thinking well this man is about to kidnap us right but come to find out the man had a message from the Lord for my life I had never experienced that before it was the first time in my life somebody is telling me something direct from the Lord about me he said to me what is your name remember the man don't know me I hesitated because I wanted and you know, I didn't know if I should give him my real name or not because you know I don't know who this man is then of course I got the release in my spirit to just tell him I said my name is Diane he said listen to me I am going to tell you exactly what the Lord told me to tell you and listen that man told me from let me say it like this Genesis to Revelation about what took place with me he told me, he said, you were in the islands. No, he didn't have to call out no name. He said, you were living in the islands and you became sick suddenly. By now, this man had my attention. Okay, scruffy looking still, but he had my attention. I listened. He said, you got sick suddenly. And it is, he said, have you ever heard of spiritual wickedness in high places? And I said to him, well, my grandmother used to talk about that. He said, no, it's in the Bible. He said, you are attacked by witchcraft. You are living in the islands. You are living with a woman and their mother. He went on to tell me the whole story, who I was living with and what happened. What happened? He said, you got hurt in the bathroom of where you live. No. Friends, I shared and my mother and I shared an apartment with another person. And it's one of those arrangements where you only had one bathroom. All right. So I just setting it out plain for you. One bathroom. While I was sick in the BVI, this is how I know the Lord has a sense of humor. 
the only place that I could go and get some sort of solace was in that bathroom. You know, it's like when I became really sick and there was a time when I felt like I was going to die. I literally felt like I was going to die. I became so sick while I was in here in the BVI going through that that one I even started to my speech started to slur I could not remember anything it was like it was overtaking my whole mind even though I was just numb from my waist down feeling excruciating pain please don't ask me how can you be numb and in pain at the same time you know only those who have been there I guess can explain that but he told me everything about what happened while he was in Jamaica sharing this information with me. Now you say, well, how do you know that? That's still not proof that something goes like that. The woman who we shared the apartment with was in the BVI confessing to my mother what she had done. You know why she did that? Not only was it, of course, directed by God for that to happen, but she thought I was going to die in Jamaica. So she told my mother that your daughter came here to BVI, got, well, let me put it the way that it was said, because she, she's Jamaican. She said, she come here, come fast in my business. So I fix her business and don't look for her to come back here because she's going to stay in Jamaica until she dies. That's what this woman, wicked woman, told my mother. All right. So the Lord is doing the revelation in Jamaica to me. At the same time, she's here confessing to my mother because, listen, how do you go? If, I, if that were to be so, if I had died, how do you, how do you report a suspicious death? You understand how, how, what do you say to people when you die mysteriously or, or, you know, what does your family say? Oh, she, oh, she just got sick and died. That's what the devil wanted. But when God say yes, right? Nobody can say no. I was ordained to live and not die. I was ordained to live and not die so that I would have a testimony to share with you today. So she's confessing and she's not expecting me to come back at all, right? My mother can't say, what are you going to do? Go to the police and say what? They would laugh. They would laugh at you. And that's the funny thing about these things. They are spiritual in nature. All right, spiritual. So it's not like you have some tangible, you know, evidence. Oh, well, this lady told me that she went to the, the witch doctor to kill my doctor, my daughter. Of course not. You can't go with that story. It's going to sound weird. But glory be to God. What the devil meant for death did not happen. All right. I got what you call progressive healing. He said to me, that same taxi man said to me, you're going back. I told him, I know I'm not going back to that place I don't know what happened to me I'm not going back he said well if anything I've said to you tonight is not true then you will not go back to the British Virgin Islands but as I know the Lord spoke to me tonight and told me to tell you this you are going back all right well well the rest is history let me put it that way because I'm speaking to you now from the British Virgin Islands so I did come back listen when I got back to the BVI and that woman laid eyes on me she almost passed out because she could not believe that whatever she did did not work let me tell you what happened and why she did it oh lord the time is going let me tell you what what I came to find out after this woman, she and her, uh, let me put it how it is, her boyfriend, right? They were up in a church posing as husband and wife. They were on the ministry team. I'm not making this up, friends. This happened. They were on the ministry team. When it was time to pray for people at the altar, these people would be there first to lay hands. So if it wasn't the pastor, you know in churches they have people who do altar ministry. They were a part of that, but they were also recognized in the church as ministers. You understand what I'm saying? Ministers. This is what happened. The man, and I'm, I'm, I'm just exposing the devil this morning. This is going to help somebody. The man was already married. Married. Okay? Married. They were pretty much living in adultery because the man was married and i'll tell you all how i came to find that out because the lord revealed everything while we lived together he would hardly be there would just come on the weekends 
and she would say, oh, my husband is working off island. When he comes, you know, of course, his husband and wife, so they're gone in their room and, you know, we know us and everybody minding their own business because everybody's Christian, isn't it? But while we were in the home, the Lord would just have me reading from the word and it would always be about husbands being with their own wives and wives being with their own husbands, things like that. And I don't normally read aloud, but I would just read this thing and I couldn't understand why. Well, at the time, I didn't even realize that it was something the Lord was doing, not knowing that my reading that was offending them, was offending them. They thought I knew what they were doing. But poor Diane did not, but the Holy Spirit did. And that was his way of warning them. But no, they persisted and they continued. Well, the Lord said, all right, sorry, Diane, you have to be, you know, the lamb to the slaughter, but I'm going to put a stop to this. So they went about now thinking that I knew that they had this illicit affair going on while being ministers in the church. I did not know. Honestly, I did not know. And that's why it's so important for us to have that level of discernment because there are some things that are happening around us and we turn a blind eye. Why? Because what with some of us, it's not even that we turn a blind eye. We just don't know. We just don't know. All right. So they did what they did. I became sick. No, while living in that house. So I'm backtracking now. While living in the, in the, in the apartment with them. It was kind of weird because this lady would always give me food. I was sick, right? So, you know, you, you need somebody to cook and feed you and so on. And she would always give me food. And, you know, I would enjoy the food and tell her how nice the food is. And somewhere in the back of my mother's mind, which my mother was a Christian as well, right? But, you know, sometimes when you, you, you're really and truly not that strong in the faith because my mother hadn't too long you know, giving her life to Christ. I didn't grow up seeing my mother being a Christian. She actually got saved here in the BVI. All right. So she was not too long a Christian, but she kept saying to me, I don't trust this woman. And you know what I would do? I would jump on my mother literally and defending her. Leave the woman alone. What are you talking about? And she would just feed me and feed me and feed me. And I was there enjoying this woman's food, not realizing that she was the one. That was hurting me you understand and I guess no wonder while I was sick that long because I was sick for six long months okay I was sick for six long months I, I started to you know hobble around and do that before the six months was up but when I came to myself when I realized that I was whole I was well when I checked the time frame it was six months all right so that's what happened while we were in the house no backtrack again and back in the BVI and this lady is shot beyond her wits right my mother moved out from her because when you know when she told her those horrible things my mother said I can't stay in this house with y'all she moved out from her and of course you know she just got upset and she stopped attending the church now when I came back to the BVI and the lady saw me almost pass out over time, I just didn't see them. I, just, I didn't see them again. It's like they, they left. They left the BVI. I got a job. I got a job at a law firm. And this is where everything came out now. And this is so interesting because working at the law firm, you know, people didn't even know what I had gone through before. And they did not even understand that the job at that firm was like a setup. The first file, friends, the first file that I was given to work on, because I'd worked in a law firm before in Jamaica, so I had that experience. When I came back, I, I was working at a restaurant as a waitress. I couldn't do that job anymore, because even though you know I was walking around, I was trying to make sure that I did not put too much pressure on my legs. So I, I sought a job that you know was a little bit, you know, less. Uh, hassling. So I got this job at the law firm. The first file that they gave me to work on was the man's file. I recognized the name. Listen, friends, of course, I wouldn't go into details about all of what, no, you know, but the long and short was it became clear what the problem was. The people were not married. Okay, they were not married. These two people, not married, up in church, 
ministers laying hands on people living in adultery because the man was married who was trying to separate from his wife i guess so he could be with this woman but they're up in church together you know and i'm like okay so you're involved in ministry in the church you're involved in ministry serious ministry laying hands on people the pastor could not detect that nobody could detect that here is a couple that was up in the church working witchcraft witchcraft in the church i'm not talking about out in the street doing something on their job or whatever people who confess christianity who were actively involved in the church was going to witch doctors obia man voodoo workers to hurt somebody in the church that they thought had offended them friends we have to be careful we have to be so careful so very careful right that sometimes when we think that we are all fine and okay in God and I'm a Christian saved sanctified filled with the Holy Ghost on my way to heaven that we are actually falling because when these things are happening around us and we're blind to it we cannot see it that's a problem that's a problem friends listen I don't have a lot more time to go into all of this today right but I'm gonna continue tomorrow right the Lord will help us yes keep keep me covered cover yourselves because as we go into this week it's gonna get a little deeper because we're gonna talk about this thing the way the lord is revealing it to us he wants us to know friends but if you don't remember anything else from this morning learn this when you look in deuteronomy 18 9 to 14 look at what the lord is saying he finds detestable he finds these things detestable friends do not let any body carry you to anywhere to practice these things do not follow anyone to any obia man to go find out anything when i was sick i could have gone here and there and said oh well i trying to find out what is wrong with me no my trust and confidence was in the lord and what the devil meant for evil because they wanted to kill me but i'm alive and well right i listen the lord gave me psalms 118 verse 17 i shall live and not die i did not even know it was in the bible when he gave that to me one night i felt like i was just gonna die the pain was great my speech was slurred i it's like i felt like i was going to die that night i'm so serious and then i remembered the story of hezekiah when the prophet came to him because hezekiah fell ill the prophet came to him and said set your house in order because you're going to die and hezekiah turned his face to the wall and he cried out to god and the lord heard him and added added 15 more years to his life friends the lord has been more than merciful unto me it has been more than 15 years and i still declare that i shall live and not die I shall live and not die to declare the works of the Lord, which is what is happening now. Because had anything happened then, you would not have had even, you know, this opportunity for us to share like this. You understand? And it is my desire to just live for God. I know he has a calling on my life. He has one on yours too. So listen, the devil cannot kill you. He cannot kill who God has ordained to live. So let them come with the witchcraft and the hoodoo. The plan was to kill me. You understand it didn't work but the lord allowed me to go through that so that i can be a source of help to somebody else who is experiencing you know some of these things no not every unknown illness is witchcraft all right so we have to get that disclaimer out there not every unknown illness is witchcraft but listen when it is in that particular realm the lord will reveal it some way somehow tomorrow right we're gonna look at signs of a witchcraft attack signs how can you know for sure let me put that word there that you're definitely under witchcraft attack right i mean this is just one is your hair falling out for no reason you go to every dermatologist everybody none of them can tell you why it's not like you're using chemicals in your hair because you know some people do that and hair loss you know unexplained hair loss that's just one of many and I'm going to go into some more of that. So please, friends, keep me covered and pray for yourselves as well as I do the same for you. Because the Lord, 
he wants us to know. He wants us to know, friends. He wants us to know what's taking place so that we're not ignorant. When he says that he finds these things an abomination and that they're detestable, he wants us to avoid them completely. So we're going to look at it from the angle of those who are being attacked by it and those who are actually involved in it. Because some people say, well, I used to, you know, go to the Obeman years ago. I'm now a Christian. I'm saved. I'm sanctified. Feel the Holy Ghost. You know, I'm all right. No, friends. There are some things that would have attached themselves to you. And these are some of the things that I learn when we go away. We didn't go away to a witchcraft conference, all right? But I'm saying the things that we learned include, included this whole topic of how these things operate in the body of Christ. We saw so many people delivered, set free from a witchcraft attack. Witchcraft operated in the church, on church choirs, on praise teams. You understand? These things are coming from boards. They're coming from places in the body of Christ that you do not expect. And it's really a shame. And the Lord is exposing it. The devil doesn't like to be exposed, but the Lord is the one that's doing the exposure. So friends, we're going to continue. All right, so you hang in there. You pray. Pray and trust God. Because I know that by the time the end of this, this week comes, some of you are going to be delivered from what's going on in your life. You understand, I truly, truly believe that the Lord is going to deliver some people and that's the reason why he wants us to get you know, these, these, this knowledge out there that he hates this. He detests it. It's an abomination. Sorcery, fortune telling, witchcraft, casting spells, incantations. Right? We have had people lay dead cat under our vehicle. I mean, the cat didn't die under there. It was placed there. We have gone out to our gate and seen, you know, a big red candle, like it, like it was burning all night at our gate. So just the remnant we, you know, we saw there. Listen, friends, if we, if you all think that the devil like you all, okay, um, get rid of that notion. Do not be wrapped up with the devil. Don't, don't, don't try to be his friend. He doesn't like us. His aim is to kill us. It's to destroy us. It's to destroy our destiny in God. That's what he wants. He's after our destiny. He wants us to become so sick that we cannot even fulfill our purpose. That's what he wants. So if he can find somebody who is willing, somebody who has a grudge, somebody who is resentful, somebody who hates the way that we're prospering to attack our life, oh, he will use them. You understand? Bad-mindedness, jealousy. What, what do you think originates all of this? It's from the devil. Yes, he's the source. But he has willing participants. And it's sad to say some exist in the church. When we see we're jealous and we don't crucify that flesh that causes us to be envious and covetous, we want what people have. We try all sorts of things and the Lord doesn't like it. So he's exposing it. It would shock us to know, friends, sometimes, who are the people involved in this wickedness, in this abomination. Sometimes it's operating right at the top, 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 top. Spiritual wickedness in high places. It would shock you to know what some do to control people, to manipulate people, to manipulate outcomes. Are, are you confused? You know, I've seen people like, they're con so confused. They don't know if they're going or they're coming. You understand? And some people believe, oh, that's normal. You're just getting older and whatever. The devil is a liar. Listen, whatever it is that's attacking your life, that's not from the Lord. Because listen, all of these sickness and things is not of God. Yes, there are times when he causes certain things to manifest for whatever reason. But I'm saying, friends, that devil doesn't like us. All right? So I'll say this now because I'm wrapping up now. I'm going to pray. If anyone you know or yourself is involved in this whole witchcraft thing, some people think it's just... Uh, a little, a little um, game, you know, they just go, just got to find out, I, I didn't do nothing, 
I, I just went with a friend. Listen, you're opening up yourself to some wicked things, wicked operations, demonic possession. Do not mess with fire, friends. Do not play with those things that you do not understand. There is nothing innocent about consulting psychics, calling psychic hotline. I see psychics advertising openly now, openly in the very nation that I live. Some of us say we're a part of a Christian society. Really? How Christian is it? What makes it Christian? Really? Friends, let's not be fooled by the enemy. Let's not, let's not think for a moment that the things sometimes that we see manifesting around us, that they are, oh, well, no. We need to take authority over these things. We need to not be afraid. Some people are afraid, so they don't want to touch it. They don't want to touch it. They're afraid. They're afraid. They, they're fearful. You know, I, I, listen, let me just keep myself quiet over here because I, I, I don't want to attract any, any unnecessary warfare. Let me tell you, that devil will come upon your turf and you better be ready. You better be ready. I'm not saying anything to scare anyone. I'm speaking reality here. All right? We should not be afraid because the Lord has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. All right, so I just want to pray right now for somebody you may be going through. You don't even know why. Your marriage falling apart. Children acting wild and crazy. And you're thinking to yourself, well, this is just a normal part of life. But the devil is a liar. In any way that he's attacking your life, we're going to pray now and we're going to trust and believe God for a change to come to that situation. Listen, no doctor healed me, friends. Doctors have their places. Yes, they do. I give God thanks for them. I had a particular physician. He, he was just great. He, he tried his best to help me, but he just couldn't. When he got to that point, he, he, like he threw up his hands in the air and he said, that's it. <laughs> that's where my medical knowledge stops. I have no idea what is wrong with you. After doing test after test, but I'm saying our God is the great healer. He's a great physician. I got what you call a progressive healing. I didn't get that miraculous jump out of wheelchair healing. Over time, I gradually gained the strength back in my legs. Over time, I was able to walk again. Over time, all of that went. Uh, it, you know, it went, I had like pins and needles you know, afterwards. And you know, as the nerves were being repaired. And God did that. He healed me. I'm not speaking somebody else's testimony. I'm speaking about myself. It happened to me. So I just want to pray for somebody right now. Who is going through? You may not know exactly, you know, why are you? Sometimes people ask God, why? Why me? But I would like to submit today. Why not you? If it is going to bring God glory, why not you? All right? Don't be afraid. The devil cannot kill who God has ordained to live. Pray, trust God, believe him, believe his word. I stayed in the word night and day, night. I was in the word. You understand? Because I wanted to draw closer to God even in this time. And he never failed me. Let's pray. Father, we give you thanks today. We bless your holy name, Lord. I thank you for your word to your people today, to the lives of your people, O oh God, even those who may be going through right now. Lord, I thank you that your word never fails and you have promised, O oh God, to heal us. You said healing is the children's bread. And Lord, those who are going through now, even the attacks of witchcraft, Lord, we come against the evil plans of the enemy. We come against his plans, O oh God, who try to kill, steal, and destroy. And we're saying, O oh God, according to your Holy Spirit, they shall rise up. Rise up in the name of Jesus. Rise up. Be healed. Be made whole in the name of Jesus. We come against every evil force. We cancel them in the name of Jesus. We speak life to every dead situation right now. Life. You shall live and not die. 
to declare the works of the Lord. You shall live, 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 live. I speak life, life in the mighty name of Jesus. In your minds where the devil has you confused. We come against that right now. And I declare the word of God over you that says he has given you a sound mind. You will not go crazy. You will not be driven by confusion. I declare that you now have a sound mind. A sound mind. You'll be able to think clearly. Touch your people, Lord. Touch them even now. Mighty God, cause your Holy Spirit to move Move through their bodies now, God, and heal them. Heal them, Lord, so that they can have a testimony. You did it for me, God. And you're no respect of person. So, Lord, cause faith to arise in their lives even now. Cause faith to arise, oh God. And they would not turn away from what you're doing, Lord, but they would have a testimony. So, Father, right now, I pray your peace that peace that passes all understanding, that peace, oh God, that is way down, cause them to rest in you, knowing, oh God, that you are the one that heals. Lord, do not even let them think about consulting anywhere else, any other source, because you are the true source of power, the only true source of power. So Lord, we thank you today that by the time we get to the end of these devotions oh God that people will be blessed they will be healed they will be delivered they will be set free even from the holes of witchcraft Lord as you damage the kingdom of darkness over their lives oh God I shift even the atmosphere with my words now over their lives oh, oh God according to the authority that you have given unto us Lord we speak into the atmosphere and we say life life some feel as if they're gonna die oh god but we speak life even today even today in the name of jesus in the mighty name of jesus rise up rise up rise up in the name of jesus thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord yes yes lord let your healing virtue flow even now let it run through their bodies, O oh God, from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. Even someone, O oh God, yes, Lord, that feels as if something is crawling in their head. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Let your healing find them even now, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. that you think it's just regular. The blood of Jesus is against you. You foul spirit of infirmity, the blood of Jesus is against you. Leave the people of God even now in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak healing, wholeness, life, Life, you shall live, you shall live, you shall live, you shall live and not die to declare the works of the Lord. You shall live, you shall not die. Fear not, fear not. The Lord will raise you up, He will raise you up, He will raise you up to accomplish great and mighty things for Him. Fear not, fret not. Be at peace. Rest in God. He's healing you even now, even now, even now. Accept his healing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, mighty God. Lord, do for us now more than we can ask or think. 
overshadow our lives, O oh God. Let no weapon formed against us prosper. Thank you, Lord. Hide us. Hide us in you, O oh God. Hide us under your mighty wings. Hide us in the cleft of your rock. Surround us, O oh God, with your fire, the fire of the Holy Ghost that brings healing and deliverance. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Bless your people, O oh God. Cause them to experience you today. Give them an encounter with you, even as they go out to work, even those who are staying at home, Lord. Give them an encounter with you. Cause them to know, O oh God, that it is you with them even now in the name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus yes Lord cover us thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord blessed be your name Lord friends friends the Lord is with you fear not all right fear not the lord is with you gotta go right now you know we went up to a, a whole hour but hopefully the other mornings will not be like this but as the lord leads what i'm saying friends fear not fear not do not worry do not fret the devil cannot kill you all right stay with god trust the lord Trust the Lord. He will help you. As we go through this week, when we get like down to the end, we will have specific, you know, specific prayers. But you just stay in God and do not worry. All right? When the enemy comes in, he rises up against you like a flood. You know, he just gushes against your life. The Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. So fear not, fret not, worry not. The Lord is with you. All right? May the Lord bless you all today. May he be with you. May he cause you to just recognize who he is so that you will walk in total boldness and freedom. You will not fear regardless of what you're going through. You will not fear because you know that the Lord is a deliverer and he will deliver you. All right, so may the Lord bless you all. Keep praying. Keep on praying. Just keep yourself covered. Because I do believe that the Lord will deliver his people this week. Share this. For some reason, you know, I just don't tell people to share. But please, just share. Share this. I'll put the YouTube link below, as I normally do afterwards. And you can just send it, even in WhatsApp, in email. So once you have the link, you can send it. So those people who are not on Facebook can hear what the Lord is saying to us concerning this matter of witchcraft in the church. So all right, you take care now. Until next time, God bless you.